the Village of Hampshire Planning and Zoning Commission on this wonderful evening of October 10th. For the record, 7 o'clock. I could ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <coughs> I will take roll. Mr. Rossetti. Here. Mr. McBride. Here. Mr. Neal. Here. Uh, myself, I am president. All right. And if I could ask everyone to review the minutes from our previous meeting on August 8th, advise of any comments, corrections. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve the minutes from our August 8th, 2022 meeting. Thank you. I'll second. <laughs> I will vote aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. Mr. McBride? Aye. Mr. Rossetti? Aye. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. If I could have you review the meeting minutes from September 12th. Again, advise of any questions, comments, corrections. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from our September 12th, 2022 meeting. Mm -hmm. I have a second. I second. McBride? Aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. Mr. Rossetti? Aye. And I vote aye as well. <laughs> Mr. Ray, I'm assuming, hopefully not incorrectly, that you could provide a little bit of background on our first agenda item. Yes, sir. First agenda item, motion to approve concept plan of subdivision for the property at 17 North 590 U.S. Highway 20. Uh, there has been a petition submitted by Hampshire 20 LLC representative uh, of such. Uh, Oscar Gazinski is here tonight, I believe, with his father. All right. Uh, so they can answer any questions or walk you through anything that you want to know about. Um, a little bit of background. This property was previously owned by the Greer family. Uh, several years ago, the Greer family came in to subdivide this land. And the night that was approved, Mr. Greer died. Uh, so the plot never got recorded, and this parcel remained uh, a single parcel with uh, two different zoning classifications on it, which is uh, not what you're supposed to have. So the um, Hampshire 20 LLC has since, since taken this property over. They would like to keep the estate district in the back. There's a nice uh, brick house back there that it's a single family home. And then they would like to rezone the frontage parcel from a highway commercial district to an industrial district, specifically M2. The rezoning vote and uh, an ordinance will come uh, later at the next step in the process. So tonight is just a review of the concept plan of this subdivision of parcel and, and any comments you might have on the zoning or how they have things laid out uh, in, in your opinions. So uh, they are here tonight. Any questions, concerns, comments? Uh, we would just ask for your consideration of a motion to approve and that will go to Village Board then. Mr. Gazinski, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, sir. Just uh, we're, put, we're currently leveling out the property as we speak. We cross on the Forest Reserve. We're dragging it out right now as we speak. We got a building order. Order It's coming in November 3rd. So, so we get the process going. We like to set up the building and move on from there. 
How long have you, have you guys owned the property or been operating ever? So about five years. No, well, since 2017. Okay, so you guys are you're you're the existing owner. Yes, we're the existing owners. Okay. Correct. So, because previous is the bank that owned it, the bank owned it for about four or five years. What type of business are you guys operating out of? So, out of there right now, we're doing our small contracting business. Yes, I guess I should add that the future rezoning to M2 flat frontage parcel will allow for any type of contractor yard. It'll also allow for any just equipment storage, um, either indoors or behind a screen fence. So, they have plans to, to do both. This as of right now. Okay. And this this property was previously in some code violations and they brought it a long way to bring it into compliance. So they they worked with us to get it to where it is now and they're going through the process further. Cool. Josh, if I recall correctly, in situations like this where we kind of have a front and a rear zoning, obviously they own both plats, but the owner of the front property has to provide access to the rear property, right? That's generally just on the property owners to. Yeah, that's correct. We have discussed that basically whenever they record the official plat with the county, there will need to be some sort of designation on it, presumably an easement that allows for access to the property. Or just um, an outright allocation of the property for a driver. Sure. Okay. So the mechanism for that access is is not necessarily in this concept plan, but you can see that the drive goes through there all the way to the back. Mr. Rosetti, just in case any audio issues are occurring, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, I, I'm definitely in favor of the proposal, but, but I have a question. Right across the street, uh, we have the Oakstead subdivision. And we're going to be building uh, 250 and 300 thousand dollar homes. I was just wondering if the owner of the property has any intention of beautifying the uh, frontage to make it more, uh, more, more aesthetical, more aesthetically pleasable. Well, as of right now, we have the fence we're we'll putting up. We'll we'll have some trees and everything go up. I mean, we we purchase a bunch of trees. We lay on the side, but once we get everything done, leveled out, we plan on having trees and shrubs too. Break that apart. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that's the only question I had. Thank you, sir. I have no questions. If there's nothing else, then I will entertain a motion to approve the concept plan of the subdivision for the property at 17 North 590 US Highway 20, submitted by Hampshire 20 LLC. I'll make the motion to approve. All set. Mr. Rossetti? Uh, aye. Mr. McBride? Aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. And I myself vote aye. All right. You guys are good to head out. We're good. This, will go to the, uh, this will go to the village board next week at their meeting as well. So if you want to come in person or attend remotely, right, then we'll come in person. I'll give you the information. Right. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Happy night. Thank you, guys. Next item on our agenda, motion to approve concept plan of subdivision for property in Hampshire Grove Business Park submitted by Northern Builders Inc. Uh, hot property in the later hot area. Yes, sir. So this is uh, along the west side, southwest side of US 20 across from the Hampshire 90 Logistics Park, which you're probably familiar with. Uh, some existing businesses in there, just for reference, uh, Pet Ag is, is directly south of where this next Subdivision is going to be uh, mineral life is in there, the uh, back transportation for union. So it is a very hot place for uh, logistics and, and industrial uses right now. Uh, Northern Builders has approximately 62 acres just north of Pet Ag, and they would like to subdivide that parcel to um, uh, split it into two parcels for now, a 22 acre site for the next user, Old Dominion Freight. And then the, the remaining parcel will be left as is for, for agricultural use until they have another user come in. So the plan is to uh, extend the infrastructure just far enough north of the next parcel and put in a temporary roundabout and up top at, at the northern edge of that stub, which of course will go away once Ryan Drive extends further north for the rest of the property. Um, Ken Nyhouse is here with us tonight as a representative for this project. Uh, he put together the application in a packet. So 
If you have any questions, uh, him or I will be glad to help answer. And just so I may ask, can the last name is that N Y H A U S? It's N Y E N H U I S, pronounced Nyan House. Okay. And honestly, that's actually to save myself some embarrassment when we go back and go through the minutes and can't really remember how to spell a name. I, I, I've been called a lot of things since a kid with, uh, yeah, yeah. with that spelling. Uh, Thank you for that, Mr. Ray. Else uh, you, you'd like to possibly add, Ken, or uh, you know, this this property when when we developed the pet ag property, we extended Ryan Drive, uh, you know, to the back to meet this uh, this new property back in 2018. And actually, that was called, I think, lot one of the Hampshire Grove Business Park. At that time, we annexed, had this property annexed and zoned M2, you know, always with the uh, with the desire that we would uh, develop this as the uh, as the market came. And recently we acquired the remaining 62 acres and look forward to working with uh, with the village of Hampshire again. We've got a great client. Uh, Old Dominion, and all of a sudden we are seeing a lot of activity. We plan on, uh, you know, fully improving the Ryan Drive extension uh, for the length of the length of this property. We don't know, you know, if it'll be one, two, or three more buildings, so it doesn't make any sense to go beyond that because we really can't okay. see the future. But uh, I, I plan on putting a package together by. Wednesday of this week and uh, turning into full submittal with landscape plan, photometrics and everything else to uh, keep the project moving forward uh, to be able, if, if successful tonight, to go to the uh, November 14th uh, plan commission for preliminary approval. This uh, Old Dominion is uh, anxious. Excuse me. But none of these plans actually state or show that there's a, a finished connection from Ryan to Higgins. Is that correct? There, there, there is there is no connection plan to go to Higgins. That was waived at the time. This was annexed and uh, and zoned. It was just not practical. Okay. I'll just add to that, Mr. Chair, that that is also still staff's recommendation at this point. The uh, uh, Alignment of Higgins Road and Route 20 is such that we would not recommend allowing access uh, from that northerly pathway because trucks trying to make that turn in and out is a not very good look. So um, making them come down 20 to Gas Road and then up into the park from there is kind of the plan right now, unless the developer comes along and improves that uh, well, approach. Yeah. We still have well seven up there that's kind of also in the way. Yeah, it's, it's being decommissioned uh, this month actually as part of our water system connection project, but it's, yeah, it's the village land right there that has to be dealt with. Sure. Uh, Mr. Rossetti, any questions or comments you may have from your side? Uh, no, I'm good, thank you. Yeah. You touched on what I was going to ask. So. There are no further questions, comments. Discussion. I will entertain a motion to approve the concept plan concept plan of subdivision for property in the Hampshire Grove Business Park and submitted by North Builders. I'll make the motion. As, as stated. As stated. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Did you say what you said? <laughs> uh, I myself will <clears throat> aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. Mr. McBride? Aye. Mr. Rosetti? Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you, very, well, you very much, Ellen. We're meeting next week, so I'll get you the information for that as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your uh, courtesy. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Good night. Good night. Thank you. I think Mr. Ray needs to remind us on this next one. We have had a few discussions on this. So, in regards.
risk of all of the projecting signs of businesses in the downtown area? I'll just add, I think one thing we probably didn't discuss before, uh, this, this came about when figuring out how to be the actual ordinance with Mark Schuster, is that in order to restrict this to just the downtown area, which has been desired by this commission and the Business Development Commission, uh, the village needs to create what's called in the code a special graphics area. So that's the first motion there, which doesn't require any public hearing or anything fancy. It's just a motion to uh, create that special graphics area, which should be, yes, as defined in, in item two on page 22 of the PDF. Um, it's State Street from Allen Road to Jackson Avenue, uh, anticipating a future extension of the Main Street area, the downtown area up to Allen, and then from Washington Avenue to State Street along Elm, Jefferson Avenue to Park Street along Elm, and, uh, or sorry, on Jefferson Avenue from Park to Elm, and on Riven Rin Avenue from Park to State. So it's essentially the same area as the facade program. It's kind of the same area that we used to define the downtown for certain grants applications. So it just seemed to fit that way. Um, so after the special graphics area is approved, uh, we would then ask for a public hearing and subsequent motion for the actual text amendments itself, allowing projecting signs. Um, any questions, comments on this? Because again, as Josh said, this is basically just the legalese for defining the boundaries that will allow the projecting signs. No questions. <laughs> Okay, so then I will entertain a motion to recommend approval of the downtown special graphics area. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Sure. Mr. Rossetti? Aye. Mr. McBride? Aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. I myself will aye. Thank you, gentlemen. This one I do recall from some discussion last time. I actually have to bang the gavel or no, I just. You can I, just declare it open at whatever time it is. Yeah. I am. <laughs> uh, I'm opening the public hearing regarding a petition for text amendment to allow the use of projecting signs in business districts in the downtown special graphics area at 7.17 p.m. Uh, and I'm assuming very strongly there is no public comments. That's my knowledge, sir. This, I, I will just note for the minutes, this was posted uh, appropriately in the Daily Herald, time, place, and date for this hearing. Okay, so then uh, I will then hereby close the public hearing regarding the petition of text amendment to allow the use of projecting signs and business districts in the downtown special graphics area, also at 718. Sneak through the same minute. Uh, <coughs> next item is the actual text amendment allowing the use of projecting signs in business district in the downtown special graphics area. Do you want to buy yeah, Absolutely. So Business Development Commission provided just a couple of uh, suggestions for requirements on these types of signs. Uh, no projecting shine is allowed to be internally illuminated. So they can have the small um, uh, uh, sconces or whatever that light them up, but no internal illumination. Um, they're only allowed to be up to 10 square feet in surface area. Uh, I think somebody asked if that was going to be too small. That would be approximately the size of Christine and Michelle's. Uh, hers is about 9.4 square feet, I think we went and measured. So uh, about that size is what the limit's going to be. Um, there are some provisions as far as distances, so it's not allowed to be uh, further from the building face than five feet. Um, has to be at least four feet from any adjacent curb or street or other, other right of way to uh, act proactively uh, deal with any traffic issues that could, that could uh, take place. It has to be at least seven foot four inches above the ground to help or allow ease of walk underneath for our ball friends. Uh, that is approximately the height of, uh, I believe, also Christina Michelle's, and, and that's about the height of the several 
awnings there um, in downtown. So it's it's a good height. And there's certain limitations on what are allowed to be on the sign. So it's pretty basic. You can have the business name, the owner's name, the logo, and the establishment. Uh, so the business development commission did not did not want this to become just a free for all of signage. Um, no changeable text or copy allowed, so it's, it's a sign that's going to stay signed. It's not going to be a continuously advertising type of thing. And then, of course, it must follow up building regulations and have permits. Any specific questions about any of the uh, requirements? On um, item 2A under 612.4, sir. Doesn't the copper barrel extend above the height of the building face? No, sir. Does it it's taken. Uh, Which discussion did the BDC have on this? Yeah, meeting, you? Oh, I thought they would have had another one. No, they didn't discuss it any further after that meeting. So just the five or ten minutes when you attended. Okay. Yeah, they all seem to be in good favor of it, though. A couple of the beautification committee members were there as well, and, and they liked the idea uh, in the downtown area specifically. Not sure I want to go on the record. Objecting to the five or ten minutes you commented on because I know I left halfway through that meeting. <laughs> I was wondering if I might ask a question, Mr. Mr. Ray. Uh, what is the reasoning behind not allowing internal illumination? And the reason I'm asking that is because all LED signs are internally illuminated. The external illumination would be neon, which is kind of antiquated. So what's the reason for not having the internal illumination? Uh, so neon signs would also be internally illuminated, meaning that the sign itself is providing the light as opposed to some other type of, uh, potentially some other type of mounted light shining on it. Uh, so <laughs> internally illuminated would include neon signs. Okay, so you're, okay, even though the, neon bulbs are on the outside of the sign you're calling that internally illuminated or externally Correct. illuminated ne neon signs would be considered internal internally illuminated it's maybe internally is a confusing word there but that's what a lot of other communities codes uh that's the language that they use yeah because you could use an led bulb to externally illuminate the sign correct which would satisfy the client the, the idea behind it right would be that the sign itself has no lights, lights right period right so whether it's a wooden handcrafted sign or right and then there has to be a secondary fixture that is shining onto the sign, right right so we're illuminating signs we don't want any correct any Budweiser beer signs hanging off the building that are internally right so i, I think the, i think the spirit of the code yeah is there but the clarification uh, that Mr. Was for the most part, for the most part, these are attempting to actually minimize light pollution. Right. We don't yeah. want light just. Yeah, the idea would be that it's a small light that would shine directly on the, if, if the business wanted it, they can have a small light that shines directly on the sign, then it would, you know, theoretically not, not uh, go much further than the sign itself. Right. Whereas a sign that is emitting light. Uh, which you know, if, if you would like to just uh, amend those, amend that sentence quickly, and, and maybe say something along the lines of "No projecting sign shall emit light." Uh, you know that that could be something if you want to clarify it that way. Is there going to be a certain uh, lumen requirement as far as for? There already exists in the code. Yes, okay. it's uh, I think it's seventy five. No. Is a certain number of candelas actually measured at 25 feet, I want to say. Okay. Yeah. Just because you asked about the copper barrel, I'm just going to sneak out. <laughs> <laughs> now you got it thinking. Our staff liaison has left the meeting, Mr. Rossetti, to do some investigating to ensure that we're not negatively impacting successful. It's good. 
So do we have any uh, argument or debate on that item number three to be internally, internally illuminated? Or no projecting sign shall be internally illuminated or emit light of its own, something? Yeah, we can make that change before it goes to the village board if, if you would like. Just make the motion to include that amendment, please. I, I think it does clarify, Mr. Rosetti, what yep. you know the spirit of what you're talking about. <laughs> what was that, Mr. Neal? I said I believe the change um, that or the the comments that you brought up will help very clearly right. state that you know we didn't you know I understand the confusion that as it's written it may create okay. so. So we're, yeah, we'd be, we'd be looking to adjust that line. No projecting sign shall be internally illuminated or emit light of its own or right. I'm sure Mr. Schuster, yes, somebody could. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. Scientific and just say emit anything on the electromagnetic spectrum. <laughs> Yeah. All right. If there are, are no further questions, comments, discussion, I will entertain a motion to recommend the approval of a text amendment to allow the use of projecting signs in business districts in the downtown special graphics area. Pending the approval of such special graphics area with the Modification to item number three under 612.4. I'll make the motion as stated. What you said. Okay. I'll second. Mr. Rosetti? Aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. Mr. McBride? Aye. Myself, I vote aye. And I entertain a motion to authorize the chair to report the actions of the commission's business this evening to the Village Board of Trustees. So moved. Second. Mr. McBride? Aye. I myself vote aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. Mr. Lizetti? Aye. Uh, no public comments. Um, I have no announcements to my knowledge that I would like to publicly state. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. Mr. Rosetti? Aye. Mr. McBride? Aye. Mr. Neal? Aye. Myself, I vote aye as well. Thank you, gentlemen. 